This is problem 4-37E, it's on page 234. Uh, the indicated figure shows portions of uh, shaft from power transmission equipment. Compute the maximum repeated torque that could be safely applied to the shaft if it is to be made from AISI 1141 OQT1100 steel. So let's write down the material first. Uh, let's see. 1141 OQT at 1100. Uh, get all that right? Yeah, that's it. Now, if you look at the figure, you'll notice there are two grooves. You'll notice that the shaft is made like this. There's a groove on the left-hand side and a different shaped groove on the other side. Uh, the, the information, the, the geometric information is given there. I guess I may as well go ahead and write down some of it, though. This, or all of it, I guess, why not? This diameter is an inch and a half. In fact, all this will be inches, so I won't bother putting that on. The width of the groove here is 0 0.008. So that's eight thousandths of an inch. No, I'm sorry. That's not the width. That's the radius. That's wrong. That's the radius. So that's in the corner. That makes more sense. And an eighth inch groove would be a pretty small groove. The radius at the root of this groove is um, 0 0.08, so they're an order of magnitude difference. And the inside radius here looks like on both, or I'm sorry, the inside diameter on both is 1.2 inches. Okay, so both of these are going to uh, cause stress concentration. And we're supposed to figure out the maximum value of torque that this shaft can carry. Okay? All right, now, the way I thought I would approach this is to say, well, one of these grooves is going to give us a higher stress concentration than the other. Whichever one gives us the higher stress concentration is the one that's going to limit the amount of torque that the shaft can take. Because if you put torque in on one side, it comes out the other, you're going to have the same torque throughout the entire length of the shaft. So let's figure out which one has the higher stress concentration factor. Is it the groove, which is on the left-hand side, or is it the oil groove on the right-hand side? I'll just refer to them as the, the right and the left groove. So let's look it up and find out. So go to the back here. Just intuitively, which one do you expect to have the higher stress concentration factor? I'd say the one on the left because it has a smaller radius, but let's let's make sure. All right, so let's see. Go to page 724. 724, is that the one we need? It looks like it. Looks like our geometry, so is that the one we need? How many people want to vote yes? How many people want to vote no? Good, you're right, it's not. Why is that not it? This is a tension force, right? This is an axial force. This is not a torque. We're interested in torque. So what, what page number should we use? Which page number has the record? 729, good job. Page 729, A226 is the one we want. Now you might start looking and look for another figure for this group, but you'll find there aren't any. In fact, this stress concentration factor chart is the one we need for both of these. It's just two different radii. Okay. Now if you look at the uh, x-axis, you'll see that the parameter is the radius of the groove over the diameter inside the groove. The diameter inside the groove is the same for both of these. And the one with a smaller radius, this one, is the one that's going to put us farther to the left on that figure. Does that make sense? Okay. Farther to the left on the figure is the higher stress concentration factor. So which one's going to cause the most trouble, this one or this one? Left or right? The left one, because it has the smaller radius, just like we said initially. Okay. So to figure out where we're at on the x-axis, we'll take the radius of the groove in the right. 
We'll take the race and we'll just neglect this one because it won't matter over the diameter of the groove. So let's see, the radius is 008 over diameter of the groove, 1.2. Somebody throw that in your calculator, please. Let's see where we're at on this figure. Yeah, 0.007. 0.007. You see a problem? Mm -hmm. Okay, the first minor division line would be 0 0.01, right? 0 0.01 is reasonably close to this, right? It's only three thousandths off. So we're to the left of that line, but you notice none of the, the lines intersect, right? Just for practice, let's find one that does intersect, and let's find the stress concentration factor over here, so we can actually read it off the chart. And then what we'll do is estimate the one over here, okay? So now let's work on the right-hand side. It's pretty easy, right? It's just an order of magnitude difference. So do you see how over here, R over D would be 0 0.07? Does that make sense? Okay, so on the x-axis, we can read that off. In fact, it would be two minor divisions beyond 0.05. Okay. So then we have to figure out which curve we're on. Well, we need the overall major diameter to the diameter of the groove. That'd be one and a half over 1.2. How much is that, please? Let's be with the calculator. 1.25. 1.25. Thank you. And let's see, we've got a curve for 1.2 and there's one for 2.0, so somewhere in between the two, probably closer to the one for 1.2. Notice how much space there is between the 1.05 and the 1.2 line, and how little space there is between the 1.2 and 2.0 line. Okay. That means the, the individual numbers are concentrated between those two small ones. So 1.25 should be very close to the line for 1.2. In fact, we could simply read the line for 1.2 and be acceptably accurate. So my best estimate, let's see. Okay, I have my number. What do you guys think? I've got a vote for 1.55. Anyone want to second that or vote for something else? 1.6. I've got a vote for 1.6. I need to put on an auctioneer's voice, except I can't talk that fast. Do I hear 1.7? Who agrees? Who disagrees? Anybody? What do you think? 1.6, we've got two. Okay, let's just put check marks there. Anyone else? Okay, I think it's 1.61, because notice that that intersection for 1.6 and 0.07 is below the line. Remember, we should be slightly above the line. Now, the minor divisions on the y-axis, the next one up would be 1.65. Does everybody see that? Whoever said 1.55, I would disagree with that we know it has to be above 1.6, okay? So my best estimate was 1.61. It doesn't really matter because we're not going to uh, calculate the stress or, or deal with that side anyway. We have to actually estimate the stress concentration factor at 0 .007. So what do you guys think on that? I should say, what would be your guess? <laughs> this is about all we can really do. Three? Is four wrong? No. <laughs> Notice how 1.55 can be wrong and 1.6 is reasonable, and yet three versus four, who knows? We don't really have data for that, okay? I'm going to estimate a stress concentration factor of four because when I look at these lines, they're, they're trending up pretty quickly. Is it right? Is it wrong? Did I extrapolate it? No. That's just my best guess, okay? So let's just say that the stress concentration factor is about four or so, and of course there's a big question mark here. We really need more data. But for our purposes right now, this will do. Okay, so there's the stress concentration factor. And by the way, if you decide the shaft can't take as much torque as you want it to, what would you do? Increase that radius at the corner, right? You don't want a tight radius like that because there's so much stress concentration. <coughs> okay. Well, how are we going to figure out the maximum torque? Well, we know that the stress is related to the torque, right? The higher the stress, the lower the torque that the shaft could take. So let's find out what this material can take. So in other words, let's come up with a design stress. How could we do that? Well, go to, uh, I think it was page 202. I made a note of that. 
Yeah, there we go. Page 202, look at table 4-1. Problem statement said that the, the the maximum repeated torque that could be safely applied. So how should I calculate the design stress here? What should it be based on? Look at table four one. The answer's there. This is a repeated load. In other words, applied, unapplied. So this is like fatigue. Repeated torsion, it's just the center one, right? The design factor should be 4. Therefore, if I take the yield strength and divide it by 8, why do I divide by 8? We talked about this last time. I thought it was 4. No, it's 2. Because it's 2 times. Why is it 2 times the 4? Because the, uh, it's always twice the, what you call it. Estimating the shear yield the shear strength is about half. Exactly. The yield strength in shear is about half of the yield strength in tension. Okay? Good. Good memory. Good job. So that's why. All right. So let's go look up the yield strength of this material and see what we can find. Now, as I go along, what I try to do is give you guys a lot of information and then ask you for information later to make sure you know where to find it and help you begin to solve these problems. Okay, so you tell me what should the yield strength be for this material? We can all look it up. We'll see if we can agree on a number. 97? 97 what? Uh, KSI. I got one vote for 97 KSI. Anyone second that? Okay, good. Does everybody see where you got that from? If you don't, it's page 714. You just look up the material. Look up the yield strength. What's the difference between the ultimate strength and the yield strength? The ultimate strength is where it breaks. That's right. The, the ultimate yield strength, strength is, is where a fracture. Yield strength is where it starts to uh, deform without any added strength. It starts strength. to deform without being able to return to its original shape. Okay. So that's their yield strength. So 97 KSI. So 97 KSI divided by 8 comes out to what? 12.125. Thank you. Do we really need the 125? Maybe, maybe not. Probably really not, but we'll keep it for now. Okay, so there's our design stress. Okay, that's all well and good, but how do we relate that to, uh, to torque? Let me find the equation for you. Here we go. I'm already on the page. Go to page 202 again. And look at equation 416. Equation 416 says this. It says the maximum shear stress is related to the torque will be divided by Z sub P. What was Z sub P again? I don't remember. Polar section modulus. Polar section modulus. I'll get that eventually, probably by the time you guys are done with this class. What was it? Well, it's a polar moment of inertia combined with the, the diameter or radius. Okay. We're interested in the polar section modulus for this. Well, which one? Well, remember when we went and got that stress concentration factor? It has to be based on either the cross-sectional area here or here, and we didn't bother to notice which it was. So let's go back and look it up again. It seems like they're always basing it on a smaller cross section, so I suspect that's what they'll do this time. Yeah, so page 729, which is it? Smaller or larger diameter? I'm going to use one and a half or 1.2. You're questioning 1.2. Give me a confident answer. The lowercase d sub g, do you see that in the denominator on page 729? We're calculating the nominal stress. That lowercase d sub g is the diameter of the group. Okay. So they just expanded this and expanded the polar section modulus. Is that right? Got it. I got it for right now. I won't remember next class. <laughs> 
Okay, so it's pi diameter of the groove cubed divided by 16, so really I can put the 16 in the numerator. Okay, all right. So we can rearrange this and solve for the torque. The torque we would allow would be, now this maximum stress is what we're gonna to set to the design stress, right? So we're just gonna plug that in instead. Awesome. D multiplied by, let's see, it would be pi dg cubed divided by 16, if I rearrange the math properly. Uh, yeah, that looks right. Any questions? Okay, well let's continue and work this out. So this would be the design stress, 12.125 KSI, pi over 16, the diameter of the groove, 1.2 inches quantity cubed. And what will our units be when we're done with this? Thousands of inch pounds, right? K inch pounds, because the square inches will cancel with two of these, but there's still an inch there. We've got thousands of pounds times inches. Okay, so plug it into your calculator. Let's see what kind of number we come up with. Run out of space. Well, if this is the max, because that's the maximum stress, I'm sorry. 4.11. Thank you, 4.11. And this is kilo pound force inch. Let's change it to something we'd all like. How about foot pounds? Okay, so. Basically, if we take care of the kilo, that'd be 4110 pound force inch. And now if we multiply by one foot for 12 inches, basically take the 4,100, and then, or not 1,100, 110, 4,110. Divide by 12, and what do we get? 342.5. I'm sorry? 342.5. Thank you. Let's just call it 342 and be done with it pounds force of torque. So that's the maximum the shaft would do. Is that a lot of torque or a little bit? Depends, doesn't it? Depends on if you're talking about applying it with a wrench by hand. It's a decent amount of torque. A whole lot of torque. In fact, you better have a long moment on for it. Most uh, torque wrenches for working on engines, you can generate about 100 foot-pounds or so of torque reasonably. Um, you could generate more, but still, that's quite a bit of torque. Is that a lot of torque for an engine? It's a decent amount. It's not shabby. Too much, not too little. Is it a lot for a wind turbine? No. Right, so very small, in fact. A wind turbine would generate quite a bit more than that. Questions, comments? How did that? Yeah, go ahead. When we went from the 1.6 to the 4, I know we were looking at the graph and we just kind of estimated, but how did you do that exactly? Just to make sure I'm. I, I looked at how the line went up and just right. took the best guess I could. Okay. These are, so these there wasn't like an equation you used or you didn't really? No equation. All right. It's called SWAG. You know what SWAG stands for? <laughs> Sophisticated Wild <clears throat> Guess. That's what okay. it means. Okay. Right. Sometimes you take a SWAG at it. Right. I better cut that out of the video. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't use the stress concentration factor, did we? Oops. Where should we have used the stress concentration factor? So it would be stress concentration factor times the nominal stress. There we go. All right, I missed that. So basically we have to, uh, let's see, yeah, so what we've got, let me get my thoughts together right. Uh, let's see, because I jumped directly from the design to that. So we'd have to derate this essentially, so we divide by the stress concentration factor. Let me back it through the equation. It would be here. And so let's see, we should have multiplied it there. Right? Did we do that right? Yeah. So we should have put it here. And so this is wrong. Let's try again. Good thing we're not on an exam. Good thing I'm not taking an exam, isn't it? Okay. So now basically what you'll end up doing is dividing this by four. And that's how much it could take. So what's the number now? Under 100 foot pounds. I don't know the number. Oops. 1.03. 1.03. That's not possible. 
103 is too much still. You probably did the first one. <laughs> Yeah, it probably took that and divided by four. Try three forty two divided by four. Eighty five less than three. All right. Any other questions? That was a good question. I missed it.